Hello once again, it's SDS YouTube, David Brown, Tom Neiman, and the Jackrabbits Tom go 1-0 again for the second week in a row. A uh, demolishing of Southern Utah, 55-10. to Looked like it would be a close game through the first quarter and a half, but then probably midway through the second quarter, the Jacks exploded on offense and held down on defense. Yeah, really, midway through the first quarter, after Southern Utah went down, decent uh, football team. They threw it on the Jacks a little bit, but that quick passing game, go down, take a 7 to nothing lead, and then South Coast State's defense was just lights out after that. It was crazy. And Stig said they didn't make a lot of adjustments. They just kind of took a deep breath and settled in and pretty much shut Southern Utah down the rest of the way, and then the offense got rolling. And the Jag, there were so many concerns about this offense, and they've scored 41 at Kansas, 55 now against Southern Utah. Uh, we'll see what they can do against Robert Morris coming up, but the offense looks pretty good. It seems to be fine right now. Yeah, the offense seems to be fine. The defense, as you said, though, needed a little adjusting. Kansas ran tempo they ran hurry up and they had a little bit of trouble in that game and then Southern Utah came out and their first their only touchdown drive Jacks had trouble with it but as you said they found a way to adjust they did and just uh, played straight up got after the quarterback a little bit the Jacks had their first three sacks of the season in this game first one of the year by uh, Cole Langer and as Co coach Stig says we're not a great defense we're a good defense but we don't have great players if that makes any sense not really any superstars but just really solid at every position Nick Mears made a bunch of tackles in this game Cody Hazlett one of their uh, linebackers who came in last year transferred in last year had an outstanding game with a sack and an interception and a recovery on a uh, kick that the Jacks uh, not really an onside a kick but a little kick. pooch kick that they go down and cover so the defense just just went lights out after that first Southern Utah drive. And the offense, Brady Mangarelli, 143 yards and two touch, three touchdowns in this game as uh, he got rolling offensively. Zach Lujan was great again, was just throwing it right where it needed to be. And uh, they put up 55 points and uh, get to 2-0 and with this win. You mentioned Mangarelli, you mentioned Lujan. Of course, the superstar is Jake Winicky. 11 catches, 205 yards, another two touchdowns. And as, as Stig said, He's not a secret anymore. Pe like people know who he is and he's still putting up these monster numbers. Yeah, and if you're a defensive back at six foot, you just don't really have a chance. They threw one to the sideline. He just goes over, takes it away from the kid. Um, they threw a fade pass to him that was just impossible to defend. And a Winicky with 205 yards receiving in this game. He's got three of the top 10 all time already in receiving yards per game in one game for the Jacks in uh, just his second season what played 16 games maybe now something like that so Winicky is a super weapon and Lujan is finding him and uh, Cam Jones had a catch in this game uh, Trevor Wesley had a, a nice ball game with three catches a couple of those on third down so the receiving core is rounding out a little bit and the offense just is just rolling right now. Dallas Gardner, another guy he got a late touchdown from Dalton Douglas when the backups came in a, a 77 yarder for their both of their respective first touchdowns for Douglas and for Goddard well, looking ahead now, they're they're two and zero, but they have this weird bye week that, that's placed here because they don't really want to break up the Missouri Valley football schedule. So they have two weeks until they face Robert Morris, another FCS team. Is is the bye coming at a bad time just because of all the momentum that's happening right now? I think so. Yeah, I mean, you would like to keep playing, I think, but they're going to turn it into a positive. I mean, Stig's very good at doing that. Just uh, make it into a positive thing. They're going to try to get their guys home if they can get home and uh, see their families this weekend and then uh, come back and get ready for Robert Morris. Probably doesn't come at a horrible time. I don't know if there's ever a good time for a bye week. There probably is later in the season if you're banged up a little bit, but they're going to turn it into a positive, come back against Robert Morris, and then they got North Dakota State the week after that. So they get a game before they get into the Valley and the Bison come to Brookings. Well, Robert Morris is coming up on September 26th. It'll be the first of five straight SDSU home games that will be broadcast live on Midco Sports Network. Stig said Robert Morris, a bit of a triple option team, kind of like Cal Poly last year, where it's a lot of a lot of things that people really aren't used to seeing. and. Stig, Stig likes to use the phrase communist football sometimes, but he yeah. says this isn't communist football. This is legit football. Yeah, he doesn't like it when you spread it out with five wide receivers and just throw it all over the place. But he he respects this triple option where, like you said, there's so many options. Uh, you got wide receivers flying by, and you can give it up the middle of the big man. You can do all these things in this triple option set. So that'll be interesting to see how the Jacks defend that. But, again, they've done a nice job adjusting after teams have kind of come down and made you worry a little bit about what's going to happen to the defense. But we'll see what happens against Robert Morris. Yeah, and it'll be interesting. Robert Morris, a team that only won one game last year, but just this past weekend, they took Youngstown State to overtime. They lost, but 
We don't know if that says more about Robert Moore, sure if it says more about Youngstown, but Robert Moore's probably isn't the same one in 10 team they were last year. No, probably not. And they've been to the playoffs uh, more times than South Dakota State has in their history. So uh, it's going to be interesting. But again, good, good test just to see some of these teams that you never get to see and some of these offenses that come in that you don't get to see very often. And um, South Dakota State, well, I, I just, you just get a really good feeling about they're going to get another victory against Robert Morris, you would think. We'll see. And then uh, the Dakota Marker game is going to be really good this year. It'll be very fun. Just to give you an idea of the parity of the Valley this year, SDSU, the only 2-0 and team in the Valley. Everyone else is either 1-1 and or 0-2. For Tom Neiman, I'm David Brown. We'll see you next time.